This is Tito back with another video on the Redmi K20 Pro and today in this video I'm gonna be showing you the latest build of Evolution X ROM based on Android 13 and this is the 24th October 2022 build. It is almost time that there will be a newer update for this ROM because it's already 6th November today but I have been using this ROM on this device for a long time now and yes daily driving the latest Evolution X ROM has been amazing. I'll share my whole experience but yes there are still some of the bugs that I have faced I'll mention all those but as far as the build info goes this is the build that I have flashed and talking about flashing if you want to flash this ROM on your Redmi K20 Pro you can check out the guides from the description jumping into the Android version section this is how it looks like still we have the Evolution X logo up top and the Android version shows as Android 13 if you make this clock to 1 o'clock you will see the Android 13's easter egg if you tap like this and yes they definitely look beautiful let me go back the security patch here is still of October 5th 2022 and the Evolution X version shows as 7.2 and the name is Unbound for Rafael and this is the official build again. The stock kernel here is 4.14 Soviet star kernel and here is the build date again 24th October and the build maintainer is of course Joab or Stalex and we have the build number right here is Linux status shows as enforcing. In the system panel settings this is how it looks like and we have a system updater from here you can check for updates if you want. In the gestures we have a lot of things like the quick tap or the back tap kind of gestures and you can customize these between these many options. Let me go back we have the system nav gestures and in the settings of it we have both the pill length and radius customization pretty normal stuff and we have the back gesture animation space under the keyboard you can customize that and we have the swipe to invoke assistant and stuff they should be working fine. Let me go back we have the two button and three button navigations as well then we have the swipe to screenshot and yes there is the scrolling option if you want and we have the share edit delete and the google list option as well now the double tap and the one handed mode are also there and it is working fine let me go back we have the front camera settings there is the pop-up camera sound effects and we have the camera led disabling option by the way this is how the home screen looks like i have customized it a bit the battery widget is really great all the other widgets are working fine too if you tap here as you can see it opens the phone's battery settings if you tap here it will open the bluetooth battery settings this is really convenient and just look at the animation how beautiful it looks i have been using a wallp wallpaper but there is also the papers app of evolution x and again to the left of the home screen we have the google's discord page and this is a pixel launcher again and the settings are pretty minimal we do not have any double tap to sleep anywhere in the home screen but that is present for the status bar swiping up will get you to the app drawer and you can search for any particular app if you are willing to swiping down will get you to the quick setting or the notification panel this is how it looks like bear with my voice guys because i have cold and that's why my voice sounds weird i've been coughing a lot so i apologize for that now here in the quick setting panel we have a lot of quick setting panel toggles and you can edit it out if you want you can edit and add even more toggles if you want but yes in the evolution x this is one of the most amount of toggles that you will find in a custom rom on the top we have the brightness slider and we have the automatic brightness button and we have the other toggles like the Wi-Fi, the mobile radio toggle and there is the Bluetooth icon and the flashlight, the dark theme and the auto rotate and stuff. Only thing I do not like about the quick setting panel is that even in the light theme the quick setting panel stays dark like this. Right now we are in the light theme as you can see but still the quick setting panel stays dark here. We have the night light, the anti flicker or the restreaming. The always on display toggle is there you can toggle it for even charging and stuff if you want. We have the hotspot the screen recording option now in here we also have this hevc screen recording that's great and we have the battery saver the do not disturb and the google home kind of controls and by the way this is how it opens up we have the extra dim the heads up and the fps info is also appearing right over there as you are noticing and yes the display is running at 72 hertz as you can see 72 fps is showing up over there so yeah no issues with the 72 hertz it's been fine and here we have the reboot toggle you can directly reboot the recovery or fast boot from right here and we have the refresh rate switching option and the data saver, the nearby shear and we have the airplay mode, one handed mode, mute toggle or the sound toggle you can say and this is how the power menu looks like, it actually looks very convenient and in the advanced settings you can regularly boot to the recovery or fast boot from right here. In terms of the customizations, the Evolution X is still one of the most customizable ROMs. You have plethora of fonts, you have the other icon packs and stuff, then the Wi-Fi icon style and even the signal icon styles are there. And even the icon shapes you can see the nav bar style everything is there you should not worry about it even in the dark theme we have this use black theme and stuff let me actually enable that 
for the time being so that i can show you there is this paint in snow then we have this black which is the pitch black option now we also have the status bar kind of customization then the quick setting panel customization is also there and there is a landscape battery kind of icon right or left even you can have this quick setting quick pull down then the brightness slider position you can have it show always and even on the bottom as you can see so yeah all these customization are still there and in the gesture settings we have the long press power and toggle torch the brightness control double tap to sleep on lock screen and status bar in the misc settings we do have the unlimited google photo storage and the unlock higher fps in games the volume panel timeout you can customize the usb configuration you can set it to file transfer very conveniently no issues and we have the game space the always on display scheduling option even the app lock is there let me actually show you in the product apps you can lock any particular app that you are willing to and yes it is actually working as you can see the app lock is working this is how it will look and if i tap the fingerprint scanner as you can see it unlocks so yes it is a very like good experience with the app lock and stuff in android 13 too that's great but there are a few cons before i talk about those let me talk about this is how the battery settings looks and if you scroll down there is the charging cycles but it actually shows the charging cycles from when you actually started using the rom or clean flash the rom actually so that's how it is right now it shows eight charging cycles for me this simply means after i flash this rom it is spin eight charging cycles i guess and the current battery capacity is depending on the percentage of your battery so right now there is 3500 plus mh of battery left and we have the design battery capacity mentioned as 4000 mh by the way let me tell you this is a new battery that i have over here i have replaced the battery from the service center and we have the battery optimization option right here and the battery charge warning then the smart charging and the battery saver and stuff is also there but let me talk about the battery life with the aku battery app i've tested that and if i scroll down just notice the battery life over here the screen on time here actually shows that i have got about nine hours plus of screen on time that's just huge and definitely it is a new battery but surely this is a really great battery life for a flagship kind of device and yes this device has a snapdragon 855 and it is battery smooth experience everywhere no issues whatsoever that I have faced even with 72 hertz everything just feels fast and snappy you can also check the screen off and the combine use they are great too in the health section you can see my battery's health shows as 97 percent this is a new battery again that's why my battery health is really great even the fast charging is working fine but there is a con regarding the fast charging whenever i use a 33 watt fast charger the phone definitely gets hot i mean too hot to touch almost that it actually shows a charging warning that the device is getting too hot or something so that's when i had to unplug the device so that is one con but if you're using the box supplied charger which is a 18 watt fast charger that charger does not make the phone hot at all with the 18 watt fast charger the phone definitely stays a lot cooler and even you can charge it up and use the device at the same time no issues with the 18 watt fast charger now i do have some of the apps opened over here let me talk about one more bug but let me show you I have three apps opened as you can see in memory basically sometimes i have seen when i have a lot of apps opened i cannot open a new app it just force closes i'll show you a screen record if i can so that bug was present and it used to happen now i cannot show you that on camera because it's not happening right now but sometimes while daily driving i have seen that bug and to fix that you just need to clear all the apps from memory you go all the way to the left then clear all the apps from memory and reopen the apps it should open perfectly fine Another bug was that the picture in picture, if you open any app in picture in picture, that kind of window stays buggy in the animation. Whenever you try to open a particular app, it actually shows that kind of window on the bottom wherever it was for a moment. So that bug was there. These are still present. Maybe it will be fixed in the future update. But as of right now, those are there. Talking about the camera, yes, it has this Gcam Go and it is decent. I would say, let me actually show you if I switch to the front camera takes a little bit time but yes as you can see it switched the front camera fine so i have adjusted slightly the exposure kind of thing so after that as you can see this is how the quality is you can definitely use this particular gcam go as this is a default camera the quality is great no issues this is in portrait mode and you can see the background blurriness there is a little bit of weird artifacts i would say but otherwise it's fine for a normal portrait picture as you do not get the MIUI camera, even you cannot really flash it with magic, I guess it will give you force closes. So yeah, there is the video mode and stuff. It will actually show you for how long you can shoot videos with the storage you have left. There is the filters as well. You can use these. Not really sure how it's applying the filters. It's not showing this on screen. 
But yeah, you have this filters option, then the portrait mode and the normal photo mode. There is also the translate mode if you want to use that. And here, let me actually show you there is the QR scanner mode if you want to use that. This is a really great stock camera, I would say. Earlier, there was no stock camera on Evolution X-ROM, but right now you actually have a stock camera and there is the night mode and there is also the HDR kind of mode. So you can toggle between them if you want to. Also, I have installed this LMC 8.4 camera. Again, this is a really amazing camera if you want to take really like beautiful quality of the like landscape kind of pictures. You can definitely do that and even the front camera and stuff is working perfectly fine with this particular camera. I'll list the like XML and this particular LMC camera in the description. You should not worry about it. And with this, you can actually switch the lenses. You can switch to the 2X or the telephoto lens. Then you can switch to the 1X or the normal lens. And there's the 0.66 or the ultra wide angle lens. In terms of sound and vibration settings, this is how it looks like. And we have this vibration and haptics. If you scroll down, we have the intensity customization for the haptics and we have this silent and medium mute option. Then we have the part app volume control and we have the charging sound, charging vibration, dial pad tones, etc. Then we have the Mi sound enhancer over here and you can choose between these presets. There are a lot of presets for the Mi sound enhancer and we have the choose preset option. Then we have the smart scene option as well and this enable hi-fi option is there. Let me show you this is how it looks and you can use the volume panel just like this or you can switch the volume panel from right here as you can see switching is very very convenient and as you can see it is a lot more fluid experience with all the animations and of course while you are playing a music this will actually show you the app volume control and it will actually have this kind of option it will show you this as you can see let me show you from the quick setting panel you can switch it the volume output device from right here again and this is almost accented everywhere even in the lock screen it goes like this so this is great. Talking about the Fingerbit scanner speed, let me show you. This is how the Fingerbit scanner is actually working. It is working perfectly fine. Let me actually enable the always on display. And here, this is how the always on display should look like. Let me actually close it up so that you can see the bigger clock. This is how the lock screens or the always on display's bigger clock looks. And if you double tap in the lock screen, the clock's font becomes a little bit thicker. As you can see the animation, they just look beautiful if you're noticing. Let me just unlock again and yes the fingerprint scanner unlocking speed is like very fast no issues whatsoever that i have faced and if you're wondering about the animation just notice how smooth the animation is of unlocking this is the default animation by the way and you can change this animation if you want to let me show you one more time as you can see the fingerprint scanner speed is perfectly fine no issues whatsoever and again in the lock screen and in the udfps settings you have the udfps icon picker there are plethora of fingerprint scanner icons if you're looking for all those and there are huge amount of udfps animations as well if you're looking for all those in terms of security yes in the settings we have the quick unlock option if you're looking for that but there is the app lock too in the more security settings than the app lock of course you have the app lock but yes there is only the fingerprint scanner option there is no face unlock as of right now so that's it guys about the latest evolution x ROM, and here are the android and geekbench score with a cpu stress test if you're looking for the benchmarks of this particular build but i have to say this is one of the most stable android 13 experience that i've got for the redmi k20 pro and this is by far has given me one of the most daily drivable or very like convenient experience only thing is that i miss the miui camera except for that i do not think there is a huge issue with the bugs the bugs are very minor so thanks for watching this video give this video a thumbs up if you liked it share this video with your friends if you feel like this is Tito from kd and signing off for today i'll be catching you guys in the next one bye now